is the same on them. Their verdict, you know, Allah said already that these are there's a people that there's فَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ They're not going to believe now. They're a lost cause. And now he's fortifying that idea. He's saying أَذَّرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنْذِرْهُمْ Whether you warned them or you didn't warn them at all wouldn't make a difference. لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ We're not going to believe. The, those are the people that are a lost cause. إِنَّمَا تُنْذِرُوا You're only going to be able to warn مَنِ اتَّبَعَ الذِّكْرَ Whoever followed along behind the reminder. Now to follow behind something is to identify with something. Something in you piques a curiosity. You know like you're walking by, you're, you're walking on campus and there's a crowd. And you smell, you smell something good tasting. So you join the crowd. Something familiar in you. You smelled it, you say, oh, they must be cooking something there. Let me go check it out. And you headed that way. And you followed, you followed your nose in that case. Okay? So you follow something that is, that is, that appeals to you. Something inside you clicks with it. Allah says, the only people you'll be able to warn is when the kinds of people, when they hear the reminder, it clicks with something they have inside already, and they follow it, they're inclined towards it. Those are the only kinds of people. وَخَشِيَ الرَّحْمَانَ بِالْغَيْبِ And was fearful of the exceedingly merciful in the unseen. Now what does that mean? In the previous surah, we saw the manifestation of Allah's rahmah. I'm just, gonna, just trying to stick to the word rahmah now, because I've explained what it means, right? We saw the manifestations of Allah's rahmah and how they're supposed to actually make you afraid if everything else has a purpose. Then I, more than any of these things, has a purpose. Everything else doesn't get to observe everything else. The bee doesn't look at the sun and say, what a magnificent creature it is. It's just doing its job. The, the, the other creatures of Allah, the flower, doesn't look at the mountain and say, wow, that's incredible. We're the only ayah of Allah that looks around and appreciates all the other ayat of Allah and our own selves. The bee can't even appreciate itself. It can't even look at it and say, How was I created? But Allah says, فَالْيَنظُرِ insan, مِمَّا خُلِقْ Human beings should observe, what are they made of? What are they made of? How are they designed? We can even observe and appreciate our own creation, not just other creation. That's incredible. So if everything else has a purpose, we should be more liable for purpose than anything else. We are the most purposeful. And that scares, that's a scary thought. Then the word bilghayb here. Bilghayb means two things. One, Allah is in the ghayb, Ar-Rahman is in the unseen. But that's, in, that's okay for me, I'm still afraid. I'm actually afraid of the day that He's not in the unseen. What He manifests. And bilghayb also means that I'm afraid of Ar-Rahman when nobody else is around, when I'm unseen from people. And the unseen here could mean, I'm in the unseen. Nobody sees me in my private moments. I'm afraid of Ar-Rahman. فَبَشِّرْهُ بِمَغْفِرَةٍ Then congratulate him of great, of great forgiveness. وَأَجْرٍ كريم Of a noble and of a noble compensation. إِنَّا نَحْنُ نُحْيِ الْمَوْتَى We in fact are the ones that will give life to the dead. وَنَكْتُبُ مَا قَدَّمُوا وَآثَارَهُمْ And we have documented what they have sent ahead. Every action they did has consequences. Last surah we learned, يُخْلِف, يُخْلَف It comes back to you. يُخْلِفُهُ He brings it back to you. Now we're learning, Allah documents, He writes down everything we've done that has already been sent ahead. Meaning, you did it, you did an action, who wrote it down? The angels, and they sent it ahead. They sent it ahead for processing. How much punishment, how much reward? They sent it for, for processing to the Department of you know, Justice. And then it comes, and it's documented, every time. But then the, the crazy thing, وَآثَارَهُمْ And they're awake. Athar are footsteps in sand, literally. Athar in modern Arabic is used for ruins. Traces of something that was once there. Allah is saying, your actions have consequences way after you're gone. Just like somebody's gone and you see their footsteps, your deeds leave remnants, they leave traces. Like you can see smoke, you see smoke, and you're coughing, you're like, there was a car that has a really bad transmission that drove by here, because I could still smell the smoke. You know? It's the traces of it, it's the athar of it. So the consequences of your deeds are also being documented. You did something wrong, and as a result, your children did something wrong, and their children did something wrong, these are the athar of your deeds. These are the remnants, the, the consequences of your deeds. وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ أَحْصَيْنَاهُ فِي إِمَامٍ مُبِينٍ And we have documented everything. أَحْصَيْنَا To count something and to encompass it, to have full record of something. In an open imam. Imam here, you know imam in Arabic means several things. It also means road. 
road. And it's the, the image of a book that is so big, it's like a highway. Just You keep unscrolling and it keeps unscrolling, it keeps unfolding. Keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. That's how large the document is that, that rec records everything. Well,